guys, so part of me almost didn't want to turn this on and start filming this because I was listening to awesome music and yeah, I don't know, it's a really nice day and good music and walk home. That's my normal routine when I'm not doing beta and I have to film a vlog, um, but that's okay. I love you guys too, so I guess I'll talk to you for a few minutes. So, today, what are we going to talk about? I won't talk about work, except for, huh, it was better than last night, but I'm glad to have a few days off and not have the same patients back, because one of those patients I really was about ready to strangle at one point, um, but that's okay. It's not really his fault. His brain is sick, so, Grace, I probably should be having a lot of Grace, on Easter, oh, I can walk. I don't know if I'm stopping on Easter weekend. Um, you know, considering how much grace was given to me, especially, you know, this is the crux of it. Crux, crucifixion, how about that? Funny how that works. Um, I do actually think it's really interesting that the crux of something is like the hinging point and the crucifixion is the hinging point. Like, I don't know, I think it's cool sometimes how much Christianity just permeates everything, even if you don't believe it. Anyway, I really wasn't going to talk about this today. This is what happens when, when you've worked. See, I can't words so hard to come by okay so yes i was feeling like hmm there's like two things i could talk about one being like this saturday in between good friday and easter it's like this weird day of for the first christians this weird like waiting and and just like you didn't know what was going to happen the next day so like how you know it's feeling very like, i can imagine like what that felt like a disappointment and bad truck high truck um, just, I don't know, confusion, and, like, what did everything mean, and you don't know yet, like, what's coming, which is awesome, so I don't know, I imagine, I like to ponder about how people felt about things, not just the early Christians, everybody, everywhere, maybe not that extreme, but close, but, which I feel like it's probably really loud right now, because I'm next to this lovely fire department car that's across the street so maybe that'll help yay crossing the street um so what okay what I am going to talk about distractions on a Saturday morning walk home is my family traditions on Easter this is what I really wanted to talk about in this vlog today. I've taken a long time to get there. So, family traditions, woo, on Easter are awesome. On like Good Friday, we paint Easter eggs. This is what we always used to do. We paint Easter eggs. And then we had like the 12 like Easter story eggs and each of us kids would have to find three of them. And then we'd go through the story and each had a Bible verse on the inside and a little symbol. Um, so yay, fun. The Easter Saturday was like the most epic thing in the world. I do not think you understand YouTube, how amazing my family is, but you're about to. So we, we don't have the Easter bunny. We have the Easter spider. That's right. We had a spider who would come visit our house in the wee morning of Easter Saturday. And we have a tangled web of yarn all through the front of the house. We would each have a different color yarn attached to a wooden spoon, and we would follow the yarn to our Easter basket. Or at least, you know, when I was three, or right, I think the first time we did it, I was actually a little, a little older than that. But anyway, follow the yarn to my Easter basket all around the house. It's so fun and crazy. But then it gets starts getting tricky. 
Because then, like, all of a sudden, there's two different pathways. You have to pick one. Maybe one just leads to a dead end, and you just spend all that time wrapping up that yarn and went to nowhere. But then the other one, or the third one, however many there were, would lead to your Easter basket. And then, when you're old enough, you can handle the awesomeness. Instead of leading you to your Easter basket, you'd have different strands that each led you to a different clue. And then you had to take all of your clues together and then determine the location of your Easter basket. That's right, even on Easter, we were always being mentally challenged to, you know, make us more awesome. So, yeah, some years were like crazy insane. Like my parents had to get really creative with my oldest brother because he was like, just too, he was too smart. So one year, my dad actually drew on his yarn in Morse code. So his yarn didn't actually lead him to anything. And then at the end, he had all this yarn with no clues. And he had to figure out that all the little dots on the yarn were actually Morse code and then interpret the Morse code. And then he used those clues to find the Easter basket. Yeah, I mean like insane, but so cool. So I fully support anybody adapting this and making it their own because the Easter spider is wonderful and my favorite kind of spider. And I really think that, you know, he should start getting around more often because I miss him a lot, actually. I've, I've been cut off from the Easter spider. <sighs> Grieving a little on the inside, but I'll make it through somehow. So that's our biggest Easter tradition. The rest would be church and a new dress. And I usually like lunch with my mom's family or something, and we could have another Easter egg hunt or something with church or whatever spend time and fellowship with people. I think that's important. That's what I'm doing tomorrow and tonight. So yay for that. I feel like this vlog is really, really long now. So I'm just going to shut up. And y'all have a great Easter Saturday. I'll see you tomorrow.